On this episode of Nerdy Dating, we talk about Tinder profiles and hand profiles. We talk about should you pay for dating apps or not. We also go over if you should invest 100% in your relationship or not. And then we talk about what a high value job is for a man. <laughs> Believe that or not. And we also go over are they in a relationship? She wants a relationship and he doesn't? What should she do? We go over that on this episode of Nerdy Dating. Stick around because it's a fun one. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Dating. I am your host, Ali Zaka. And what is Nerdy Dating? It's a relationship advice podcast from a viewpoint of a nerd here in Kansas City, Missouri. And I just want to thank you guys for following the show, for following on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. I appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate the love and support. Continue to like, continue to share the podcast with everybody. I appreciate that. And I love you guys who have been with me since you know, the beginning of this journey. Now, let's go and get into today's topic which is going over tinder and hinge profile so a person on my tiktok was like man online dating suck i was like eh, not really like it depends on how you approach it but like you have to have a good profile to even get yourself in front of a few people and i was like you know what i'm gonna go over what a good profile looks like and one of the best profiles to go over because i'm on tinder hinge and bumble i figured why not go over my Hinge and Tinder profile? Bumble is pretty much similar to, to Tinder, so I'm not gonna really show much of that one because I probably won't show that one at all because they're the same. They're pretty much the same pictures, same format. Only thing different on Bumble is that the girl has to message first versus the guy messaging, messaging first on Tinder or pretty much whoever, Tinder, anybody can message first, but on Bumble, it's specifically made for the woman to make the first choice. And if she doesn't make the first choice, well, that, that match is gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and get over my Tinder or go over my Tinder now. So here's my Tinder page. First, it starts off with my name, my um, age, and then my first profile pic is a picture of me just sitting down. I'm not sure where I was at at this time, but I took a picture. So it's a picture of me with a Kingdom Hearts key and a Baby Yoda on my shirt with a smile. The next picture is me standing with me, you know, with a Koski shirt on and smiling as well. The next picture is of me and my friend's wedding and a couple of friends in my like closest friends here in this in this picture. Next is me doing Ninja Warrior. Another one's me with another friend at another wedding. <laughs> Donovan's doing something. I don't know what he's doing, but he's standing over me. I'm also smiling. Then the last picture of me, or not even the last picture, but the next picture is me smiling again with a Royals uh, jersey on, KC, Kingdom Hearts key. And the last one is me smiling one last time with a Chiefs hat on, Superman necklace. So... A lot of my pictures here is me smiling. And the reason for the smile to show that, you know, I'm at least an open person. I like to smile. I'm not, I don't look mean. I'm not angry. I look happy. Like I want to be here. Whatever the case may be. Even the smile may be fake or you no know, real or genuine. Three of these pictures, one, two, three, four, like they're genuine smiles. Like I'm not forcing it. I think the one with the Akasi shirt probably me forcing the smile. And then the Ninja Warrior one is just me doing Ninja Warrior. I have no idea what I'm doing with this picture with Donovan behind me. But that is my profile. I have looking for a long term, but open to short. Um, the reason I have open to short on there is because I'm looking to date and find my, a potential partner. I want a companion for life. And if I feel like we're not going in a direction or I'm not 100% into it, I'm going to let the person know, hey, I don't see us moving forward and I've been open with that. So at least they know that like open to short means that like there's a possibility there. I'm not looking, you no know, to continue this long term. I'm getting to know you. I'm dating. I'm talking to you, but I'm not putting a label on it. Long term means I am looking for marriage and I'm looking for the end of that journey. We're sitting on the porch at the age of 90, looking out at the sunset, rocking back and forth in our rocking chairs. I don't even know if 90 year old was that age anymore. Maybe it could be, you know, a hundred, but that's what I'm looking for. About me, I said, a nerdy guy who enjoys going out to bars, museums, coffee shops, brunch, and being active. Let's grab drinks. So that's like my goal. Like, hey, let's go out. I'm not trying to be on these apps forever. But if you want to talk to me and get me, like, you know, opened up and have a whole conversation with me, talk to me about Marvel, Star Wars, anime, art, Disney, sand, volleyball, fitness, or in or slash football. 
that conversation, those right there get me like perked up. I, mean, I want to have a full conversation with you and get me going. Those conversations you want to have. Um, love language is physical touch and quality time. Put in as an extrovert. I'm a Virgo, five foot seven. And they have my Instagram on there. If somebody wants to go stalk me on Instagram. And then um, have my job. I probably should take that off, actually. If I can, I probably should edit that. But somebody will look and see where I'm at. Um, where, here, keep to my heart. Talk about anime, outdoor activities, Chiefs, football, and anything nerdy. According to uh, perks of dating me, according to my therapist, <laughs> I'm a helper, empathetic, and a good listener. I also like to communicate. And then, um, worst midnight snack I did, eating Oreos with some milk. The reason why it's the worst midnight snack idea because I would destroy a whole thing of Oreos. That's that's why it's the worst. And I actually spelled eating wrong. I was surprised nobody ever caught me on that. I'm editing that right now. Yeah, we're going to change that. Eating. Huh. Eating Oreos with some milk. And that's another thing. You want to make sure when you're doing your profile that you don't have any kind of, like any of these, um, any of these errors on there. You want to make sure, and matter of fact, I'm not sure. I'm an helper, empathetic. I think I spelled empathetic wrong too. Look at that. My profile is named that Graver profile. Let's see, imp. Nah. Empathetic. Yeah, there it is. That was it. That was right. So my profile is named the best profile out there as far as this goes. But let's go ahead and go back. And family plans. I want children. I'm vaccinated. Um, want a pet can't really have one at this time i drink on the weekends i'm a non-smoker don't do cannabis and i just saw i got a like right there but interest movies working out coffee i already kind of talked about all that and then other things you can find like you find me dancing dressed up i tend to arrive early my exit strategy say bye first and then weekends socializing fun nights out self-care on sundays and then I reply quickly, phone calls, prefer receiving, and then my phone is usually fully charged. And then my song from Spotify is Hikari Kingdom Dress Orchestra, so Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts song. This is my profile for, for um, Tinder. I was going to say hinge because you got a hinge match. But that's my profile from Tinder. And matches wise i'm gonna talk more about that after i go over my hinge profile but this right here you can look at this profile so i'm gonna go through it see what i'm about see what i like to do see my friend circle and they also see different versions of me see me just casually being normal see me dressed up you see me doing fitness stuff and there you go and then my profile what i'm into and whatnot I guess my job was on there, what my college was. I don't mind people knowing that. Like, you can Google me and find that. Get on my LinkedIn and find that. So, it's public information. So, there you go. But, yeah, that's that's what that's what um, my profile here is on Tinder. So, let's go ahead and hop over to Hinge. All right. So, now let's go ahead and get into my Hinge profile. So, the first picture here is a picture of me with the KC... Royals jersey on and the KC shirt and you know me with a smile on my face again with the Kingdom Hearts key. Um, advertisement for my life would be would look like just me smiling and chilling. So what do we have in comments on my first question? Watching anime, supporting the Chiefs, uh, coffee and drinks. Do you have that in common? I have a voice meme, a uh, voice memo on here, like believe it or not, which I just say, you know, I'm a huge nerd. I'm into this X, Y, and Z. If you can talk to me about that, that'd be great. Then I also go into my uh, physical touch and my love languages and my like my type, or I guess astrological type. Then go back into it again. My love language is physical touch and quality time. I'm also a Virgo and extrovert who loves nerdy stuff, fitness, sports and brunch what about you and i ask the question what about you that way somebody wants to respond to that they can open up with those questions as well and respond back to me got my age got my height on here as well um whoops went too far got like you know what i'm looking for if i how i like to dr like if i drink if i don't vaccinated if i want children don't have children college 
all that stuff, religion, whatnot on here. And then I actually have something on, the, on here as well, long-term relationship open and short. But I said, I want to have the same excitement of seeing someone on the 100th date to be the same as the first date. I want to be able to hang out with somebody that I'm looking for a lifelong companion. I want to have that same excitement that's on my first time, you know, on the 100th or 200th date. So that we just constantly grow with each other and just want to be around each other and invest in each other. Like, that's what I mean. I understand that over time, attraction is and stuff like that declines, but that love for each other should continue to grow and you continue to invest in each other. That's what I want. And then monogamy is what I'm into. Um, Guess what his photo's taking there? Another the photo with me and my friends again. Got the Koski shirt again. Another advertisement for my life to look like. He said twice, actually. That's funny. Okay. Hallmark of a good relationship is hanging out with someone you consider to be your best friend or consider your best friend. You're goofy together, enjoy some of your things, and respect and trust each other. What do you think? That's the question I asked back to somebody. And the reason why I throw a question there, like I said earlier, is so that somebody will be able to respond back to me. It's not just a one-way conversation. I want to open up a dialogue and see where that goes. If that person picks that up and we have a conversation about it, we move on to the next thing. Life outtake is just me sitting in the car again. Um, typical Sunday, working out or going to Barnes and Nobles, enjoying some coffee, swinging by to say hi to my family, watching the Chiefs play or a movie. What about you? That's a typical Sunday for me. And then I got a Ninja Warrior video on here. So that is my little thing. And I don't think it plays the full thing, but that's, let me see if I need to play. Nope. Oh, no, here it is. Just some Ninja Warrior stuff. I thought I was gonna play the full thing, but it didn't this time. And that's fair. But that's my that's my profile. That is my profile on hinge. And your profile should one have everything filled out on it. If they request you to fill something out on it, it's like you're 100 percent complete. You have a good solid profile, should add pictures on there. Like whatever you do, do the things that the that the dating site is asking you to put in because that's going to help you boost your profile and help you get even further in your profile when it comes to getting getting your profile, I guess, in more people's faces because you want it to be in the most people's faces. I'm going to go over details here of that in a moment regarding matches and regarding how to um, boost your profile if you want to boost your profile. So how many matches were I getting before, you know, I decided to boost my profile? Probably one two a week i wasn't getting that many and that's actually pretty average for guys most men get about one to three matches a week if you google that and look it up that's how many matches a guy is getting women on the other hand they're getting about 50 plus matches within a day or that matches 50 plus likes within a day i was getting probably one or three likes a day probably one match a week they would get about 50 likes within a day that's how many likes women was getting a day when it comes to dating profiles, you want to get your profile boosted and get in front of people. So, I can sit there and play the slow game of just like hoping that my profile shows up at the top of a girl's card and she gets on it and she likes it or swipe left, swipe right. Like, I can just rely on the apps itself to, you know, just to get that for, for me or I can pay for it. And I did. I paid for Bumble, Tinder, and Hinge for a month just to see, you know, what is the benefit of doing that and how different my you know dating experience has been because of that so from march 18th to april 18th i paid for bumble tinder and hinge and what i learned for kansas city that are the dating apps worth paying for Tinder and Bumble, nah. I probably went through, you know, the the city. I had my my distance set for thirty miles, and I went through that within two days. Within Kansas City and Bumble, uh, for Can within Kansas City with Bumble and Tinder, it's not worth paying for it. Now, with the price of each one, Tinder Platinum was for forty nine ninety nine. So that's fifty dollars. Bumble Premium is fifty nine ninety nine. That's sixty dollars. And then Hinge X is forty four ninety nine. Forty five dollars. Now, Tinder and Bumble not worth it. If you are in a city like Kansas City, which 
Kansas City metropolitan area has over 2 million people. And you can Google that, but they're ranked 30th in the United States for a metropolitan area. Don't do it. If your 30s are, are lower, like 30s and 31, 32, or I guess 30s and higher, I wouldn't do it. Matter of fact, maybe, I don't know, like if you're living in the top 20 metropolitan areas in the, in the country, Maybe go for it, but other than that, I wouldn't pay for those dating apps in that area. Now, did it boost my profile? Sure enough, it did. For Tinder and in, in the um month, I had 27 total matches, uh, 12 conversations a month. So that's how many I started with, and I had 37 people waiting to match with me. I didn't, I just didn't like them. I love swiping them, but they were sitting there. They don't get rid of them, so you. If you forget to swipe on somebody, you can go back in and match them again. Now, when it came to Bumble, I had 18 people that actually talked to me. The rest disappeared, so I know that how, like, how much the number is for those people. I had nine people waiting, so nine people who were looking for me to match with them or not. And with Bumble, the girl has 24 hours to respond to you. She doesn't respond to you within 24 hours, she disappears. So I know I had some matches, but I had 18 people actually talk to me within that month. Not really worth paying $60 for that, and Tinder not really worth paying you know, $50 for that. Now, Hinge, I had 53 total matches. And I had 53 total like conversations. So I started a conversation with those with those people. So 53 total, which means I got my money back. Actually, I actually got a little bit more than my money back. It was it, the value of paying for the app definitely helped to so get my profile boosted. And also when Hinge, if you pay for it, you get like who's active that day, which means that you get to actually uh, swipe on people who is actually active, who are who don't have ghost profiles. The profiles are just sitting there. Tinder and Bumble don't really show you profile. Tinder has this thing, or Bumble has this thing called trending, which they show you, like, I guess, trending profiles, but don't show you who's active or not. And Tinder, it doesn't really show you. You can edit to see who's active first, but it doesn't really show you active profiles. Like, if you go to recently active, it's, it's like six people, and that's about it. Like, Hands is probably the best one to have and then hinge give you unlimited likes they all give you when you pay for you to get unlimited likes so you can just swipe left and right as much as you can like you don't have to wait think 12 hours is on bumble and tinder if you swipe out and then hinge has 10 likes per day you don't have to wait for that like you can swipe as much as you want which i thought was a benefit hinge to be to to be honest the only one to pay for it in a 30 uh, with 2000 2 million people metropolitan area that's the only the only one that seems worth to be paying for because that if you run out of people, it just recycles everybody. It doesn't let you run out and you sit there. You just go back through the cycle and, and just keep bringing back up to show you who's compatible. Versus Tinder and Bumble, if you swipe out of people, they're gone. They're gone until they had to get back on or they're gone until the system decided to refresh them, which... I don't know. Once I swipe left on somebody, I have no idea who they were and I don't know if they ever showed up again. Like, but hinge recycle cards so that way you see profiles again. So you're like, oh, maybe I didn't want to talk to this person this time. I might have a second change of heart and might talk to them this time. So that's one of the benefits of hinge that I've seen versus Bumble and Tinder. And that's the only one that I would say is worth paying for if you live in a market or, or not market. If you live in a population, a city with a population of 200 or 2 million people, that's with a metropolitan area. That's probably the one that's worth paying for versus the other ones. That's just my opinion. If I live in Chicago, I probably will get more benefit out of Tinder and Bumble, but I don't live in those cities. Now, with that being said, and then how many dates I went on? I went on a few dates. I had a few dates between then and there. Like, I'm not going to date with all, you know, total. I did a total match. 98 people from Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge combined. 98 people within that month. I matched with. I didn't go on all 98 dates. I didn't. No, that's too many people. Within a month, that's too many dates. But I did go on a handful of dates. Got stood up a few times. But other, the other ones, I didn't know. Enjoyed my time. Now, with that being said... Do not pay for these apps. If one, you can't afford them. 
Two, not pay for them. If your profile is not set up the way I had my profile set up, my profile is set up how it should be. You have a pod, you have a picture of you smiling, a picture of you hanging out with friends, a picture of you doing some activity, a picture of you, you know, your full body picture so somebody can see what you look like, for example, and then a few other ones to sprinkle on there. But like you should have you know, a face picture, a full body picture, a picture with friends, a picture of you doing an activity. Those four things, great. You have a pet, throw it in there, make it you no know, five. But that kind of thing you should have in your profile. If you don't have that in your profile, I wouldn't even pay for the apps because they're not worth paying for in that sense. If you don't have a complete profile, do not waste your money because one, people are looking for a reason to swipe right on you. And they're also looking for a reason to swipe left on you. If they saw a picture, like I can tell you right now, the Ninja Warrior picture, Girls would swipe left because it's like, oh no, he's doing something that's way too physically fitness for me. I'm not gonna be about that. But then some girls like, I'm into physical fitness. I'm into somebody with health. I'm gonna swipe right on that. The anime stuff, I'm not doing that. Swipe left. But then a girl who's like into anime, she's gonna swipe right on that. Like I said, you're trying to find the best person to meet you. In previous episode, best person that meets you, the best person that fits you. That's who you're trying to find. But. You can't find that if you don't put yourself out there and give yourself the best profile. So if you're not willing to pay for it, which I believe people should pay for dating apps. Now, here's why. And I don't think women should pay for dating apps. I don't think guys are paying for it. Women are getting 50 plus matches a day or 50 plus likes a day. Unless she's trying to see who likes her, no need for her to pay for it. I'm pretty sure the first couple of swipes, she'll get a match back, right? Like back to back to back to back to back. If she just swipes five times, she'll get a match. For a guy, you swipe five times on, on, a, on a girl's, you might not get a match. That's what it is. So I think men should pay for it, but also pay for it with a sense of being able to get off the apps. You're paying for it as a tool to get off the apps, not stay on the apps. You're paying, if you're paying for it and you're staying on it, that's a problem. You want to get off the apps. You want to move somebody from the apps to real life, to a real life conversation, to go on a date. So don't pay for it with thinking like, oh, I'll just pay for it and let the app do, do the work. No, you have to be matching. You have to be having conversations. You got to get off the apps. But men should pay for it. Women should not because women, you're going to get matches left and right. Now it's just up to you to sit through that. Like 50 likes a day is, is whew, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I'm not making that up. You can Google that and you'll see there's plenty of pages. Matter of fact, the voice of the people read it, said that jokingly, but read it. You have so many ladies say that and I've seen it. My sister had gotten on Tinder and she showed me her like box. I'm like, good Lord. I wish I had 99 plus people in my box just looking to try to talk to me. That'd be amazing. But that's not happening for me <laughs> within a day. Like, and that option to go over too much is like, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. So that's why, for me, guys, you should pay for it after you have the perfect profile set up, which you have those four things, or five things included, four for sure, of you doing an activity, a full body picture, you hang out with your friends, and a picture of you smiling, or, or just a face pic, Don't, no hats on, no glasses, see your face. Why are you trying to conceal something? You have that on your profile, and then what you're looking for, um, and then the extra thing, the extra prompts that what you fill out, throw that in your profile so somebody can have a conversation and talk to you about something, have it in there, then pay for the apps, so that way you can get your profile boosted and put in front of people. Okay, if you don't have your profile put in front of people, they're never gonna see you. You get the best profile in the world, but you're stuck underneath 100 people within a day, you're not gonna get seen. Just saying, but that's my that's my thoughts on that. That's my opinion because one, you invest in everything else. You invest in a school to get a job. You invest in you know drive lesson, get a hire, drive a car. You invest in everything else, but you, how come you don't invest in trying to find somebody? Now you go outside and you you out and about, and you're social all the time, and you have no problem being in a situation where you're around a bunch of single people and you have an opportunity to meet people. Go for it. You don't have to pay for the ass, but you're somebody who you work a job where it's off hours from other people. You work a job that you not really go to events and hang out with people, or you're just a pure introvert and you just don't want to go outside and meet people. Maybe dating apps is the way to do that. That's how the way to you know meet people and mingle and talk to people. So as a guy, I think paying for the dating apps is the right way to go, but you have to one, know your city you're in. If you're in a small city, don't pay for it. If you're going to, you know, swipe out of people within an hour or two you're wasting your time paying a fifty dollars sixty dollars for a dating apps but you're like a bigger city like chicago new york houston san antonio in this big city los angeles 
I think paying for the dating apps is probably the best way to go because the fact that you have so many people that you got to put your profile in front of. You got to beat so many people. So you got that perfect profile and you got to boost it to get in front of everybody. If you're not willing to boost your profile, you might get likes, but trickle in one or twice a week. Just saying. Um, I'm not paying for the dating apps for the month of May or April through May. I'm not. I'm, the only one I guess I'm paying for is, is Hinge because of the fact that I got a, a return on investment. I was getting like a, a match, you know, one match, two matches a day off of that app. I'm going to keep paying for that because that one's giving me a lot of buck, bang for my buck, just financially speaking. But for the other ones, I'm not. It's not worth my time. I already ran through them. It's, it's not worth it. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to run through it so that way you don't have to. <laughs> so take my advice. But you live in a bigger city like Chicago, L.A., New York, Houston, you know, those Philadelphia, those top cities in, in the country, they'd be worth investing in because you get your profile pushed in front of everybody else. But if you live, like I said, in a metropolitan of 2 million people like Kansas City where you wipe, swipe through people within, you know, two days, don't pay for it. Don't. But, yeah. That's right there is how you have a good profile, how you get boosts in front of people. And you can rewind this and get like, you know, the details of everything that I got from these from these dating apps. Like I said, Tinder, I had 27 total matches, um, 12 conversations started within that month, and then 37 people waiting to be swiped on. Hinge, I had 53 total conversations. So matches turned to conversations. 53 total and then with bumble i had 18 people to actually talk to me nine people are waiting to be matched on i don't know how many people got lost in the shuffle and then as far as um you know for the month total between the three apps 98 matches that month so but my profile was set up enough where it was a good profile to look at i look oh you know, inviting and somebody want to have a conversation with me and meet me had a solid profile. If I only had like but no pictures of my profile, the thing in my bio, forget about it. Don't even try to um, pay for anything because you're not gonna get your profile boosted. Nobody's gonna swipe on you. They do their price super curious. So I actually made sure my profile was set up. So have a perfect profile. Make sure your stuff is set up with those four things. And if you have a dog or a pet, you can throw the pet in there. But you, a face pick, no, no sunglasses, no shades, uh, no hats, a uh, full body pick. That shows your confidence. So you have a full body pick, no matter what your body type is, it shows you how confident you are. A picture with friends or family, and then uh, a picture of you doing an activity that you enjoy doing, whether that's watching a sports game, you know, going to something, whatever you like doing. I don't know, the gym, I want to do a selfie, you know. If you're going to do a gym, I want to do a selfie, a selfie. Maybe a picture of you, somebody taking a picture of you doing something, whatever the case would be. And then if you have a dog or a pet, you can throw that in there your fifth one. But that's what I would have a good profile. And then have a bio. Have a bio in there, what you're about, what you're doing, and go from there. But, yeah, that's that's a solid profile. And I hope these tips helped you out and help you build a profile. You're getting back on the dating apps or you're on the dating apps and trying to figure out how to get matches. All right. This is another reaction to my TikTok that I had on TikTok, that's funny to say, but somebody responded to a video where I was like, you know what, you should invest 100% in your relationship. You should do right for your husband things, even though you're not a wife or a husband yet, because the things you do when you're dating somebody, that translate into marriage. The things you do when you're in a talking stage with somebody, that translate into dating. If you're already acting like a boyfriend, or you're acting like a girlfriend and investing in somebody, you put a label on it, and you guys are already like going for it, that translates. You just don't flip a switch. You don't be like, well, I'm not going to talk to him every day. And then all of a sudden you become you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. Now you have to talk to him every day. And now you're like, oh, I don't want to talk to him. That's not who I am. The actions you do in the talking stage, the actions you do in the dating stage, translate. The ring, the label doesn't change a thing, but just the status of where you guys in, but the your actions, behaviors, that carry over from day one to day 99. So, I guess 99 I mean age 99, but day 1,000, day 1 million. Let's go with that. Day 1 million. Um, but this person responded to my video. This this person called Spam's Producer, and they actually have a full name on this. But they said, it's okay to have boundaries to be like, we're not there yet. It's not that deep yet because the partner isn't in 100%, and you're saving yourself to put that 100%. 
And my response to that is, it's cool to have boundaries. As a matter of fact, you should have boundaries. You should have standards. And you should date people who hit those boundaries and standards. And those boundaries and standards are not met, then you walk your way out of that talking stage or dating stage, wherever the case would be. And if you already put a label on it, maybe that relationship is not for you after you bring those you know, boundaries and standards up to your partner and they do not hit those standards. You let them know, hey, this is the boundary of mine. This is the standard of mine. You know, I appreciate you if you hit that. And your partner doesn't do that or partner doesn't take that appreciation and say, you know what? Not for me. Then it's up to you to be like, I'm going to be out or in. But to say you shouldn't go 100% because your partner's not going 100% is not good advice. Tell you that right now. You should not be worried about what your partner's doing and when it comes to the percentage they're giving. Let them know that one, you feel like they're not giving 100%, but you shouldn't be tallying, well, I did this, check, and they didn't do that, X. I did this, check, and they didn't do that, X. No, you shouldn't be tallying what you did to your partner. Don't compare yourselves. That's not healthy. That's not good to be in a relationship where you're comparing yourself to your partner. You shouldn't do that. You should not want to compare yourself to your partner. Your partner should add value to your life, and you should add value to your partner's life. But to sit there and, well, I did this, and they didn't do this for me. How can they not do this for me? I would do this if I was in their shoes. No, 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 no. You shouldn't do that. If you have a certain standard, a certain boundary, and you let that know to your partner, and your partner doesn't hit those set standards and boundaries, it's okay for you to walk out. You have the option to do that. You shouldn't sit in something that you feel like you're not getting. And you bring it to your partner's attention, and you gave them time to try to get to get that for you and time for them to you know follow through and they just like add a one don't want to follow through or two they're just like it's just not me it's okay for you to say am i okay not getting that part is that, i'm okay not getting that boundary meet met or that standard met am i okay with that then you are mazatov stay in the relationship you're fine if you're not and that sits with your soul and you can't stay with that then you can leave it's one percent up to you but to sit there and like, well, my partner's not going 100%, so I won't go 100%, you're going to find yourself banging your head against a wall, and you'll find yourself just slowly watching the relationship die out because you decided to give up, and your partner gave up, and y'all just both roommates now versus being a, you know, a relationship. And if you decide to follow through, let's say you're in a talking stage, and you realize this person is not giving 100% to you and you really you feel that and you bring that to your honestly you have to bring it to your attention because you're not there's a label not on it yet but you say you bring to your attention hey i want to move forward with a relationship and they're like oh yeah sure <laughs> and you're like excuse me sure or i'm not really like i'm not really looking for that yet then that's up to you be like deuces i'm out the door i'm not putting up with that because i have a certain goal and boundary and standard that i want for myself with a partner and i'm not getting that I'm not going to stay with it, but you should give 100% into your relationship. You should give 100% into your partner. 1000% believe that. If you're, especially if your label's on it and you're committed to each other, then you go all in. And that person doesn't go all in with you. That person's sitting back there on the ledge while you jumped into the water and they're sitting there watching like, mm, I don't want that. Then it's up to you to be like, hey, I'm going to leave you on that ledge. I'm going to keep swimming on, swimming on through and find another ledge, jump off with, with somebody else. And, you know, dump into that pool, into the water, and, you know, experience the Great Barrier Reef. I don't know what I'm going into. Just stay with me. But pretty much to say you're not going to go 100% with somebody because they're not going 100% and you don't want to get hurt, that's not what a date. That's not way to be with somebody. At the end of the day, every relationship is going to end. We all hope it ends in death do the park. That is the best scenario. Death do us apart. Death, whatever phrase it is, I just threw it and messed it up. But death do us apart. We want that. Especially if you want a monogamous relationship. But whatever it case would be, even not in monogamous, even you're polyamorous, but you want to be with a partner who at least, you know, there with you to the very end with the death bed, the notebook, cuddle each other in the bed together and you're dying. That's amazing. That's something that we you know you try to shoot for if you're out there dating. But if you're like, ah, I don't want to go 100 percent because they're not going 100 percent. That's that's not a healthy relationship. That's not a healthy relationship to be in, and you'll find yourself stressed out and frustrated and trying to figure out why they're not going 100 percent versus saying, hey, you do you. I'm gonna go find somebody to do 100 percent with you. 
I, you love and you lost. You lost. You could, you could have, if you would have 100%, well, this could have been something special. But you know what? This is your lesson to learn, not mine. I'm dipping. And that's perfectly fine. But 100%, you should go all in your, in your relationship, especially when you put that label on it. Dating, when you're talking stage, I think you should give 100% into that. That's just my opinion. But understand it like, you're in a talking stage. There's no labels on it. There's When you don't have labels, you don't have boundaries. Just saying. So, in a, you say ex, if you're exclusive, that's just dating to me. Just put a label on it, call it a day. But if you're like dating, talking stage, and there's no there's no relationship on it, there's no boundary, no label, hey, it's fair game. You know you can go 100% and say, hey, that's what I want to be. And you can let your feelings known. They don't match that, then that's out. But... Once you put that label on it, you should go 100% in and you should watch somebody and see what they're doing. If they're not going 100% in, then you can say, you know what? That's not for me. I'm leaving. Adios. Bye. Deuces. Chuck them up. Deuces. So, yes, this person here set a fire to me when I saw that because I was just like saving yourself. There's no need to save yourself. And you're dating scared, then you shouldn't be dating. If you're dating scared, you should not be dating. If you're dating and you feel like, oh man, they're gonna break up with me. I know they're gonna break up with me. I know they're gonna break up with me. You need to go take away from dating, have a conversation with yourself, speak to, you know, talk to a therapist. Maybe maybe not talk to a therapist, read self-help books. Read books about how to boost your confidence and understand that when it comes to dating, you are the prize, not the other way around. I guess your partner could be the prize too. Who said they can't be? Matter of fact, they should be a prize as well. You got both should be prizes, but you should be treated like a prize too. You can treat them like a prize, but you should be treated like a prize as well. And your partner is not giving you that. The person you're talking to is not giving you that and not making you feel valued, not making you feel like you're, you know, worthy and make you feel like you're a great person and they make you feel like crap, then you shouldn't be with that person. Like I mentioned before, your partner adds value to your life and you should add value to their life. If you're not getting value from your partner, and your partner's not adding value to your life and bringing you down and adding negativity, you're out. Call it a day. Like if they're not giving 100% and you noticing that and you state that to your partner, you should be out. But don't date scared because you, because oh, well, if I don't give 100% and they break up with me, see, I told you I'm gonna get broken up with, therefore I feel safe. That's something you need to work on. You need to work on that because that's not a good thing to be into. Just saying. All right, TikTok time. I might do two TikToks on this episode and get some Reddits. But let's see what we got here. So this first one from Jeff Morrow 4 And he's, I don't think I ever respond to any of his videos or react to any of his videos, but I've seen a lot of his stuff. So his video starts off with, she's a 10 out of 10, but I can't be with her due to me not being where I want to be in life. Let's see what you have to say about this. Something I've never been able to understand is how some of you can say she's a 10 out of 10, but I'm not where I want to be in life, so I can't be in a relationship with her. So she wants to be in a relationship with you. She's a 10 out of 10 in your eyes, and you're telling me you can't be in a relationship with her? It sounds like an excuse to me. Because she's a 10 out of 10, that means she motivates you, she supports you, she understands, she treats you like a human the way you want to be treated. She doesn't try to shame you with any type of social media tactics, and she wants to build with you, and you're saying you can't be in a relationship with her? For what reason? Please don't tell me because you can't provide the lifestyle that she wants because she's already understanding that and she wants to build with you. Because in reality, if you think about it, if you have a woman that supports you and you have absolutely nothing and you're a genuine individual, I guarantee you, you're going to start to go 10 times harder for that person. And it's just going to motivate you to bring a life for the both of you just due to the fact that she was with you and you had nothing. Do you see how that kind of contradicts some of you? You want a woman there for you when you have nothing, but then you're not going to be with the woman that you think is a 10 out of 10. Because of what? Yo, pride? Yo, ego? I agree with him. 1,000% agree with him on that. Yeah, if you're, if you're saying she's a 10 out of 10 and she wants to be with you, she is telling you she wants to be with you, and you're like, oh, I'm not there financially yet. I can't provide for her. She gonna ride with you. She's riding with you. You stay with that lady. She got your back. She's making sure you're taken care of. She's supporting you all the way through. Like he said, that's an excuse for you not to be in a relationship. 
One percent. I agree with him. One percent. Matter of fact, I, me and him had a lot of the same thought process when it comes to online dating and just relationships and, and relationships in general. But I agree with him. If you you're not financially where you are in life, and you have a partner who wants to help you get to that point, and you generally care for them, they generally care for you. What's the issue? What's the issue? Gain your confidence up and say, hey, she's not going to leave you. She already told y'all communicative. Y'all talk to each other. You have all these things I go over with. And she's telling you she's not leaving you. Why Why are you getting Why are you getting into your brain? That's something you should work out on. It's something like you should go read, like, kind of read books, self-help books, how to boost your confidence up, listen to podcasts and talk about self-help and how to build your build your confidence up and build your um, mind, your positive mindset and mental mindset. Surround yourself around positivity because... Like yes, you listen to these dating apps and listen to these, dating apps, listen to these dating TikToks where girls like, well, if he ain't got money, he ain't gonna be for you. Yada yada yada. No money, no love. Yada yada yada. You, you have a girl who's like, hey, I don't give two craps about no money, no love. I'm here to support you, and we're gonna ride and die together. You ride and die with her. You stay with her because she's a good person. And you don't want good people to leave because good people are hard to come by, especially when you're dating apps nowadays. When you're dating, you know, so many different people because everybody not sure what they want. When you find somebody who knows what they want and they want to be with you and they're telling you they want to be with you and they put 1% effort in, like I mentioned before, they put 100% effort in, then you put 100% effort in unless you don't want to be with them. If you don't want to be with them, you break up with them in the in the pain. You know, they're going to be hurt for you know however long, but they'll be fine. And then you go work on yourself and then you go and don't, don't expect them to come back because they might not. But you go work on yourself and you find somebody else who you feel like is the right person for you. Just saying. All right, let's keep it going here. We're going to another video. And this is from, see what we got. Oh, the uh, the officer Tatum. And he goes in. So let's see what And he you wonder why y'all single. Here's a list oh. of jobs that men should not do, especially grown ass men, okay? For one, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. Matter of fact, any fast food restaurant, if you think that you are a grown ass man working in a fast food restaurant is okay, something is wrong with you. So working in a fast food restaurant is not okay, but what if you're the manager? Managers at McDonald's make good money. What if you're a regional manager? You're still working, you're still working at fast food restaurants. What if you own a uh, Chick-fil-A? You have to work there as a as a franchise owner. So if you work at the Chick-fil-A and you own the Chick-fil-A as a franchise owner, is that not good enough? These women stupid. It get worse. Trust me, it get worse. Right? Leave those jobs to the teenagers. My nephew can't even get a job right now because there's some grown ass men in his goddamn 40s flipping my goddamn burger. Okay? Let it go. Leave it alone. That job is not for you. Anything in retail, okay? I don't want to see no grown-ass man handing me a dress, okay? Why are you a grown-ass man working at Ross? That makes absolutely no sense, okay? Target, Marshalls, like, guys, give it up. What about Neiman's? What about Allen Edmonds? What about some of these really high-end places like Gucci? Louis. What, what about some of these places that are multi-billion dollar companies that are in retail? You can't work there? Leave these jobs to the kids. Leave these jobs to the teenagers. These are jobs. Oh, I forgot. She wants you to sell drugs. She wants you to sell dope. She don't want you to work an honest job. She wants you to sell drugs. Druggos. You get in high school, in college, but once you're a grown ass man, you do not need to be working in any fast food restaurant or any retail restaurant. And for you. And this is where she go to hell. Listen to what this woman said. <laughs> ah! High value men that think that it's high value to work for the city. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're absolutely wrong, all right? No police officers, no firefighters, no construction workers, no mailmen, oh. no post office. Um, if you consider that a high value man, you're absolutely wrong, okay? There's nothing high value about making 70000 a year. You know how stupid you gotta be? Ooh. First of all, police officers, it's a spectrum of job identity within the police department, right? If you are entry level police officer, maybe you'd be making 70. But if you are a captain, a lieutenant, a assistant chief, deputy chief, chief, if you're on the SWAT team, you're in a special assignment, you make it way more than 70,000. And the firefighters, she gotta be the dumbest person in the world. If you working for a mail company, you making good money with benefits. Retirement. Anyway, before I get crazy on here, go to the next video.
<laughs> That's wild. That is wild. Um, <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> oh, the fact that you said law enforcement, firefighters, post office. It's not high valued. I'm curious to see what she thinks a high value job is because she's at 70,000 a year. You can make an honest living off of 70, matter of fact, you can make a good living off of 70,000. Look, Google, how many people are making $70,000 a year? Do that. Google the average you know, wage, salary, income for Americans in the year 2023. If you Google that, you'll probably find somewhere between 50 and 60,000. 70,000, you're doing okay. You're doing more than okay. Matter of fact, now I know there's inflation, stuff like that, but at 1.75,000, if you make more than 75,000, the, the, the more money you got after that did not increase your happiness because pretty much everything you needed was taken care of. You have a roof over your head, you have food you can take care of, you can go on vacation, stuff like that. Put money aside and go on vacations. Like 75,000 at one point was, you know, and this is a study. It's not me making this up. You can go Google this as well. I don't have to study back in my head. As a matter of fact, there's a book I'm reading right now. So the art, um, the science of happily ever after talks about this same study. But um, seventy five thousand was the limit. Like that was like where you went more than that threshold to seventy five thousand. Wherever money you made did not increase your happiness. They asked you like because everything you needed uh, was taken care of for 75000 take care of that. Medical bills, all that stuff, as far as like, you, know, you might make payments, stuff like that, but you didn't have to sh think about like, oh, I can't pay for my bills or my apartment, stuff like that, or a house. And then plus you had somebody else in that income, so you make 75000 and then your partner brings another 40000 You know, you guys are set, you know, or you probably bring up fifty thousand. You guys are doing okay, one hundred and twenty thousand, you know, um, a year, and you got to put your money together, and y'all can take care of the kids and whatnot. So, you did not need to make you know seventy plus seventy five thousand more, especially if you're single. You should be smart enough, financial enough with your money where you're not burning through that. But she was like, that's not enough. And then law enforcement was like that. That's crazy to say, like, that's not a high value man. One, your financial status does not make you a high value person. I want to say that right now. It's more about your mentality and personality and what you're doing. You can work at a retail job and you're looking to say, hey, I want to continue growing within this company. I'm going to start off at American Eagle and work my way up to corporate and then become, you know, a corporate CEO. You're over a retail company and you're the CEO, CFO, COO, um, was it um, chief customer service officer as well and a chief and chief. I don't think there's chief customer service officer, CSO, whatever the case may be, customer experience offer, whatever it is. If you're like the vice president and the VP of the regional area, you're making set money. You're not worried about when the bill is going to get paid because the bill's already been paid. So to me, to say somebody is not high value because their job is ridiculous, it's more about the goal. Like before that guy who's like, I don't have my financial status up. Well, she's riding down with you because you're a person of integrity. You're a person who keep up with like take care of themselves, health wise, physical wise. Be ready to provide for other people, not financially, but like you can look over somebody, have conversation with somebody, have, be emotional with somebody, have these topics, and you can communicate and you know have healthy conversation and be a safe place for somebody. That's a high value person. You're not spitting out toxicity. You're not bringing somebody down. You're doing, you know, helping out others. You're going out of your way. You're volunteering, stuff like that, like giving back to your community. That's a high value person. To say your job does not make, say your job makes you high value, that's the issue. Your job doesn't make you high value. It doesn't. It's about your personality. It's about how you, what you bring to the world. If you're not making a positive impact on the world itself, whether that is talking to others, helping people out, you, you, that's not high. Like, that's. <sighs> she said it's wild. It is wild. I wonder what she considered a high value man. I really wanted to know because what she said is like, that is pure wrong information. Do not take what she said to heart because she's being completely outlandish and probably just trying to get views. 
to be honest. And he reacted to it because me and him both was like, well, you got to be kidding me. This lady lost her rocker. Like, she's off her rockers. Like, she's she's gone crazy. Gone mad. Trying to get clickbait. And then she wants people to argue with her in the comments. Nah, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah, your, your job does not make you high value. I'm just saying that right now. What makes you high value your personality, how you carry yourself, what are you doing for your community? Are you helping people out? Are you being a positive impact to the world around you? Can you help out your friends? Like, help out your family? Like, what are you doing there? That, to me, has been a high-value person. Not somebody who, hey, I make 150 grand, 150000 a year. Yeah, yeah. But yet, you treat everybody like crap. You act like people are below you. No. Yeah, you get the money. But then you hear about a lot of women who say they date somebody who they had the money, but they didn't feel fulfilled in their relationship. Is that a high value person? Nah. Nah. Money's not everything. Money's not everything. Ladies crazy. <laughs> All right. Next video here. This is from Stay Slick with Kit. And they have on here, why don't guys ask women out anymore? And let's see what they have to this say. This is where I feel frustrated, yeah. is where I just think that it just doesn't make sense to me how women are not being asked out on dates. Like, there are so many beautiful women, like, come on, like, just, just shoot your shot. But a lot of the things that the guys were telling me, and these were guys from the ages of, like, 19 to 40, was like, no, we don't want to intimidate a woman. If we see them on the street, like, we'll cross the road so that they feel safe. I do that. Um, I no, do we that. don't want to come across creepy. True. So I do see that, obviously, culture has has really like removed this from the man this kind of like the art of the chase and then that i think in effect is making more men pa passive a lot of this has to do with of course feminism but the hashtag me too movement the level yeah. of awareness on sexual harassment which is a good thing the awareness needed to be there yeah but there has been such a level of overcorrection, so much to the point that even a man just approaching you on the street is harassment mm -hmm. and the issue what a lot of men see is you can have two guys do the exact same approach one's harassing her and one is received well and the only difference is that she sees one as being attractive yeah no i understand that but that's not really fair it's like, not fair it's... but for a lot of good men they're yeah. like okay well the only way i'm gonna know if you find me attractive is if i approach you but if i get it wrong and you don't yeah that's a harassment case so for a lot of men it's like X, it's not yeah. worth the risk uh-huh yeah no we're not living up my life um <laughs> i'm playing i'm playing <laughs> um yeah that is something where Guys are afraid to approach women because of harassment, because of um, they don't want to be like a bother to a lady. So they, they're afraid to approach her. And you've seen women on social media posts like, hey, don't talk to me unless you're a 10. Don't come at me unless you're attractive. Or a dude approached me. He wasn't attractive. Like, wow, I don't want to be approached by him. But you go back to it like that is a situation, like you said, the overcorrection of the Me Too movement where we're like, oh, shoot. And we didn't know certain things were like considered, you know, pushy. And what what has been taught to me and growing up was like, you should chase, 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 chase. If she say no, no means yes. And that is not the case. That is not reality. If she says no, no means no. And you walk away. You say, you know what? Fine. Nice meeting you. Have a good one. Bye. Deuces. Like. Take that L and move on. But then you will find a girl who will smile at you and you smile at you and you look at her back and you smile at her back and then, you know, y'all bump into each other again in the same space and then y'all have a conversation and then all of a sudden you got the number. Because there's signals, she's dropping hints that she want to be approached. And I feel like now men need to learn to look for those hints to, to approach a lady versus um, just straight cold approach. Now, you could get, there's some guys who can get away with cold approaching. Yes, if they notice that like, she didn't say anything to her or she didn't make eye contact with him or she didn't see him. And one, if you're going to approach somebody, make sure they see you coming. You approach the lady, make sure they see you approaching them, not just out of shadow, like creep, like sneak up behind, like, hey, how you doing? That, that's going to be creepy. She's like, what the heck? The dude scared me. Versus, like, if she sees you look at her and you look at her and y'all make eye contact and then y'all make eye contact again. Then kind of go off over and say, hey, I noticed you're across the room. Or, and this is me playing a spot if you're like guys in a bar or a lounge or sitting. She's like, hey, I noticed you're across the room. How's it going? Or you guys at the gym. To me, the gym is the only, the only way you approach somebody at the gym is after the workout. Don't approach them before the workout. You guys are walking out at the same time. But y'all also have the same workout schedule. So y'all see each other like constantly. 
and y'all kind of had the acknowledgement of each other over time, then you make the approach. But yeah, the reason why guys are not approaching because they don't want to be considered harassers. They don't want to be considered too pushy or find themselves in a situation where they are um, pushing a lady would make her feel uncomfortable. I think a lot of thing is when a guy approaches a lady, he also doesn't know when to leave. And you have to learn when to step out. If you approach a girl, make it quick, you know, quick hi, how's it going? Trying to see, get to know, see what the vibe is. And she give me the cold shoulder, leave. If she's not being you no know, responsive to you or she give you one more responses, leave. Now if she's opening up and have like her body is facing you. And she's having this full conversation, like she's facing you, you're talking to her and she looks engaged and you're engaged as well. Then you can stay around her conversation, but I wouldn't stay around for more than five minutes. She's out with her friends. So, you know, how I get to know her and then leave. Matter of fact, um, one of my favorite comedians, she has a podcast, Shooters Gotta Shoot, Erica Spira. Erica Spira, I, I, guess, I mean, I made her, messed up her last name. But Erica said when she approached a guy, she actually give, um, give her phone number to the guy and then leave. Like, she's like, I do on my way out. I'm already leaving the building. I'll go over and say, hi, how you doing? And then give my number and leave versus, um, so no, getting rejected and sitting around at least when she gets the number it's it's already you no know, she leaves she shot her shot until the person called her back i've done that before i've approached a girl i never get it you know we had a full conversation at the pool everybody talking stuff like that talking for a while having a good back and forth and then before i'm about to leave i asked hey can i get your number and she was like i, ha I have a boyfriend i was like oh whoop all right well hey <laughs> nice to meet you um by the way, you guys want to come out with us? Um, my friend and I are going out later tonight. You guys want to come out? Feel free to join us. And I well, Like, I talked to the group, everybody, but I, I approached her in the middle of the group, which took a lot of guts. Heck, got to shoot your shot, right? And then it went on off. So, I think the way to do it, though, is once you make that initial move and once, once you make that conversation and try to see if they can get, the number, get a girl's number and open her up, like have a conversation with her, I don't say open her up, but she already should be open and engaged with you. They have that conversation and possibly move on to a date. Like, don't linger. I think a lot of guys will also linger too. They linger and make it awkward versus, all right, have a conversation and then go back to where your friends are at, go back and do something. And you guys come across each other and she finds you later in the night. You good, you guys good to go. But the approach, yes, a lot of guys are afraid and we have to get over being afraid, shoot your shot because you want, you never know when you see that person again. And then two, as um, long as you don't come off creepy and as long as you don't come off like lingering, suit you and you make eye contact with her and you have, there's an acknowledgement of each other and she's like, okay, come over. <laughs> it's not gonna be like a subtle, like, yeah, bring it on. Like, it'd be like, my, like a head nod, maybe a smile. You, especially you sit in the room together and you make eye contact multiple times and she's like, give you eye contact back, go over there. Eye contact is a huge deal. So I would definitely go shoot your shot and just see how's it going and go from there. All right, Reddit time. So this first one goes, matches going nowhere. Last 10 matches or so where the woman triggered the match, only two of them actually messaged. So I went ahead and messaged, I guess no matter what the guy is supposed to initiate, right? Only two responds, only two responded. I frequently start with a greeting and then a question about how their week, weekend or week went. Eh. Each response with a generic, oh, pretty good, without specifics. I then tell them how my week or weekend went. Something along the lines of, I'm glad to hear yours was great. Mine was all right. Went to a birthday party and did some cleaning, etc. Both said they love hiking, so I mentioned I plan on going on a hike to this beautiful lake in the near future. As if they ever been there and the conversation dies. Well, eh, okay. Last 10 or so matches, I trigger a pretty similar story. I start with a greeting and ask how they are doing and if I'm lucky enough to get them to respond, they once respond once a day or once every seven days, a few times then dead. It's not even a question, just matches going nowhere. Okay, well, let's start about this. Let's talk about this. So. You get, not every person you match with is going to talk to you. Just saying. 
And then you get the conversation going, go back and forth, you ask about how the weekend goes, which I wouldn't ask about weekends. I've done it before, I'm guilty of it, I'm not perfect, because I don't know what else to talk about. Like, you see a profile and the girl just, she's beautiful, beautiful profile, but there's nothing really on there. It's like, the conversations is not really about anything, it's a bunch of model pics or a bunch of pics of posing and cute faces, but it's not like, they're not doing anything. There's nothing activity on there, just smiles. Which is fine, cool. But you open up with the weekend, the generic, how's the week going, how's your weekend. You have to start a conversation other than how's the weekend going, how's the week going. Look at their profile. Try to go something off their profile. Hope they're doing something, maybe something in the background or picture that you see. Like, for example, let's see one girl with a GameCube in the background. That's a reach. But let's say, reach as in like a GameCube. <laughs> Not like the game console. Let's say there's a game console in the background. That's probably more modern. Like, PS5 or Xbox One or Nintendo Switch. And you see that back there and you're like, hey, you play the Switch, what games do you play? Open up a whole conversation with her and maybe she play, I play this game, I don't really get into it, I'm not really a gamer, or you know what, the PS5 is back there just for me to watch movies on, whatever the case would be. But you can go off of that and have a conversation with her. You see her wearing gym outfits, you can go off with like, hey, what's your favorite workout? What's your favorite work day? Workout day, what's your, what, what, Upper body, lower body, what you got? What's your max if you want to go that route? But like, there's different things you can point to a girl's profile of, and I need to be, I need to do better myself. Cause I've done this, what he done, which is like, how's your weekend going? It's fine. Okay, well, let's see. What's next we gotta talk about? Uh, how was, what did you do? Oh, it was cool. Okay, well, we're not having a good back and forth. Let's see what else I can pull out of here. Like, you talk about her profile and what she's into, you're pretty sure you get her going. Now, the hiking part, I wouldn't invite somebody on a hiking trip, especially like you're a guy, invite somebody on a hiking trip, you don't know them, and you're going right into hiking. Hiking, you're probably not being a public area, you're probably going to be by yourself together. It's, it's kind of creepy. Invite on a date first. Maybe that's a coffee date. Maybe it's a date, a, a, a small date for drinks. That way you get to know her and see what she's about. And see, one, she's not going to try to murder you as you go on a hiking trip. And two, you don't come off as a murderous person to her. Just saying. You don't want to be the creep. And as somebody on a hiking trip immediately at the match on a dating app, I'm thinking I'm going to get murdered in a cabin somewhere, Shia LaBeouf style. And we don't want Shia LaBeouf murdering me. <laughs> Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. We don't want that. So. That is my advice to you. Talk about what's on their profile and then get them meet on a date first. Take them on a date. You have a good back and forth, go on a date, get off the apps. Get off the apps, but do not do hiking first. Hiking should be date five when you guys feel comfortable around each other and you don't worry about her, you know, shanking you with, I don't know, a two by four and, and that's a weird shank, but a two by four and a Jason mask. It's probably be more of a, of a hook. Is it a hook? What does Jason have? Chainsaw? Anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. But that's what you want. You want to get to know her first, get on like a few dates, and then invite her on a hiking trip. But get the date first, and then invite, invite them on a hiking trip. Don't just jump right to hiking. We're not trying to get murdered. We're not trying to get murdered. Next question. Where are some good openers for DMs? Usually when I match with someone on Tinder, for example, I'm usually the first to message them. My opener is, hi there, how are you doing today? God, dang it. Oh God. I match with a few people on Tinder, but they usually never reply and so far I only have one conversation. Where are some good openers for conversations? Talk about the profile. Talk about the profile. Hear me out. You're not going to go wrong Bring up an interest of theirs. If they are interested in one thing, they put something on their profile saying, hey, I love horses. Ask them, how often do they ride horses? What's their favorite horse story? Do they watch the Kentucky Derby? And they're like, I'm a gamer. I, I stream on Twitch. What's their favorite game? Who what the game they like to play? They play Pokemon. Awesome sauce. What's their favorite Pokemon game? What's their favorite Pokemon game? Character monster Pokemon monsters, yep. Pokey pocket monsters, Pokemon monsters, Digimon. Anyway, <laughs> ask them those questions, ask about their profile. And they're like, I'm into sports and I love the here in Kansas City, so I love the Kansas City Royals. Ask them how often they go to games, ask them what's their favorite moment. 
like those questions open up somebody to conversation. Matter of fact, I had one where the girl's like, I'm into um, football. So I asked her, what's her favorite football memory? And she's like, ooh, that's a tough one. That's that's a good one. That's a good question to ask. And I was like, yeah, you have on your profile. I'm going to add you about your profile. Come to forget what to talk to you about. But you ask, how's it going? You're not separate yourself. Back to the beginning of the episode, I said, and you can Google this. Ladies are getting 50 plus likes a day. You have to separate yourself from the 50 plus men that are liking her. And she's not swiping right on all of them. She might swipe right on like, I don't know, 10 of them, 20 of them. If she's getting 20 matches, you got to find a way to separate yourself from those 19 other guys. If you open up with, hey, how are you? She was like, you didn't put effort into it. I'm moving on. So you have to put effort into your matches. You have to put effort into your conversation. Talk about the profile. Talk about what they put on their profile. Now you're getting girls who don't put anything on there, but just bikini pics and beaches. As how was a beach. And hopefully they live somewhere next to the beach. And they live in, you guys living in the mountains somewhere, and they threw a beach picture, a beach pick up. Yeah, good luck with that, because she's probably traveling. And I guess you can ask, how often do you travel? There's a question there. All right, next one. All right, this is going to be the last one because we have it's a book here. So I asked him, what are we? He said, I don't know. I don't I don't think about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think about what we are. All right, so they had sex on the first date. See him about one or two times a week. Last night he paid for dinner and we we're having a good time. Went to pick up my dog from my, and my parents and asked if he wanted to meet my folks. He talked to them for an hour, got back to my apartment, and I hit him with the DTR to find the relationship talk. He looked at me like I was nuts and said, I don't know. I don't think about that. He totally shut down the conversation. I felt crushed. He also reminded me he might be moving soon. He's uncertain about his move to another state and it's up in the air. I told him I'm not really worried about that right now. He just gave you out. He told you what he wanted. He said, I like to date without the strings attached. I okay with this and I'm cool with meeting your parents. I'm just having fun here, but I'm not looking for anything serious. I might be moving. I don't know what life looking at. I'm not certain about life. So therefore I'm not certain about my dating life. There you go. Anyway, let's go back to what, he, what the conversation he is here. I should have sent him home, but I did our usual, but I did our usual. We end up having sex for like two hours. Good for you, Mazatov. It was pretty intense as usual. Great. Felt intimate and more than just some F buddies. I tried to talk a little more with him. He kept teasing me and making fun of me when I was trying to tell him about how I like him. And he was like, I know. Do I just go with the flow and act like everything is normal? The energy feels displaced for me now. He kisses me in public. He kisses me publicly and holds my hands in front of our friends. He met the folks, no problem, no questions asked. But I asked him, "Hey, what are we?" And he claims he's like I never. He clams up like I've asked him to marry me. Well, you asking for the next step in the relationship. I'm feeling like crap today. I don't want. To continue to invest in someone that won't show me that this, the, that same respect. I want a title. Girlfriend. Am I wrong for wanting that? One, no, you're not wrong for wanting a girlfriend. You found somebody who you're invested in. You like having spending time with him. You're not seeing anybody else. You want to be with this person. Great. And you asked him to define the relationship. And he gave you an answer. The truth sometimes hurts. He gave you an answer to say, I don't want a relationship. He told you right then and there, like I mentioned earlier, you're going 110%. Are you going 100% in? He's not going 100%. He's not ready for the next level. Yes, he's doing all the boyfriend things because he does like spending time with you. We can all agree with that. Holding hands, kissing you, meeting the family, meeting the friends, hanging out. But he's uncertain by his future. And nothing's worse than dating somebody who's not sure what their future is looking like because they don't know what's going to be next around the corner. Therefore, they can't be certain about where they're going to be at in life. He's not sure if he's going to be in the state or out of the state. He doesn't know if he want to move to another state and meet other women or meet other people. He's like, I don't want to really have somebody back home when I'm moving somewhere else to make a new home. I might meet a whole bunch of people out there. This girl right here, fun to hang around with. She's not coming with me. I don't really want to bring her along. He's told you when you ask him to find a relationship that he doesn't think about it. He doesn't know. He's telling you right then and there, he does not want a relationship with you. 
He's cool with being no friends with benefits. He's cool hanging out with you. He's cool doing boyfriendy things with you because he enjoy your time. He enjoy your company, but he's not looking for that next step because he's not sure about his future. That's your answer. Your response is to either hang out with him, continue being with him, or say, hey, you know what? It's been fun. Nice journey. This sucks, but I'm going to stop seeing you. I'm sorry. I want to I want to be a, a girlfriend. I want a boyfriend, the person who treats me like a girlfriend, but also wants to define a relationship and who's committed to me. We're not committed. I'm not going to spend my time anymore. You got your answer. It's a sucky answer, but heck, at least he was told you right then and there. He told you, I don't know. I don't think about it. And that's your answer. No, he doesn't want to be a boyfriend right now. He doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. He's okay with being friends with benefits. You want to be in a relationship with him? You want to be a girlfriend, not just somebody as friends with benefits? It's up to you to be like, hey, it's been fun. Good journey. I'm going to see you later. Deuces. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating and listen to this episode of Nerdy Dating. You can find the podcast on Spotify. Also, you can see clips and reactions on TikTok and Instagram at Ali Zaka Nerdy Dating. Thank you guys so much for following the show. I love you guys so much. And see y'all in the next episode. And keep being awesome. Thank you for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating. I really appreciate it. If there's another episode you want to watch, you can look at it right there. If you want to subscribe to the page and watch more content, it's down here. Also, you have a question about dating, you want to put it in the comment section, go ahead and do it. Or you can send me your dating question to my email of alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. That's alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. And I will answer your question on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate you. And keep being awesome.